What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of Career Mode, this is episode number 144 and we start on today's episode with a new big coming in here for Origi, our Belgian striker, another German club want to take him to their club, Wolfsburg also in for him right now so we said to FC Köln, you got to match 50 million pounds, that's what we've asked for Wolfsburg and we shall wait and see what they say, uh, also Polly has indeed left to Sporting as well for 9 million pounds, totally fine with that, he's decreasing in stats, he's down to an 80 overall now, he's 31 years old, Polly goes for 9 million and I'm totally okay with that because it does mean we can now offer a new bid for Marco Verratti and we put in a straight bid of 45 million pounds so a new bid for Verratti here he is the replacement I want for Bonaventura we shall have to wait and see though if you've to accept 45 million pounds for him but how about this straight after that Wolfsburg came back to us regarding Divock Origi and said yeah we'll match 50 million pounds you didn't see that one coming did you I certainly didn't Divock Origi looks like he's on his way to to Wolfsburg to play for the German side for £50 million. Also a bid for Bonaventura here. Atletico Madrid wanted for £11 million. We shall think about it though now that Polly has indeed gone. So Origi going to Wolfsburg for £50 million. That is absolutely insane because I know he scored two goals and got an assist in the last game before I subbed him off. But he's 83 overall and yeah, he's a, he's a decent backup striker and stuff but I was not expecting £50 million. I was not expecting it at all. £50 million is is mental. Also, Juventus did indeed accept a £45 million bid for Verratti, so I'm not sure what I'm happy about here. You know, Origi going for £50 million or Juventus getting a £45 million bid for Verratti. Not sure what's better, but um, either way... Also, Augsburg are going to match £15 million for uh, Gabriel. Not quite as much, but that's totally fine for me, though, uh, as the backup of Golgi looks like he's on his way to the German side. So, yeah, Origi going for £15 million looks very likely. Uh, FC Köln came back in and said £39.5 million, and I was like, mate, Wolfsburg just said it goes £50 million. So what do you expect I'm going to say to that one? But uh, either way, uh, Bonaventura as well. Still stalling this offer. I'm not entirely sure about it. £11 million for the midfielder. I did say I plan to sell him, but now Juventus accepted a £45 million bid for Verratti we don't need to sell him so I'm not entirely sure I probably will do so anyway because I initially planned to do so and usually when I say I'm going to do something I'll do it but I'm not entirely sure now because I was, I was I just I didn't expect Juventus to accept £45 million I thought they'd only go as low as £50 million at best because he's such a great player 88 overall central midfielder but the Origi deal has just it, it stunned me like I remember when I advanced to that date in the calendar and I looked at it in my inbox I had to like double take I was like oh they've rejected the bid oh no hang on a minute they haven't rejected a bit have accepted 50 million pounds are you serious so that's absolutely crazy and uh, yeah that is that is just mental it really is and we should be able to sign a better backup striker I'm pretty sure for 50 million pounds but uh, either way we've got Sassuolo here for the first of two games in today's episode back in the Serie A coming on the back of that 4-0 win against Cagliari in red hot form right now and what a start to the game as well Morata opening the scoring this guy's also in red hot form right now I do believe that's his fourth goal in his last four games a Really, really good run of form for our Spanish striker. And he does make it Sassuolo, nil Milan, one. Had a great chance to make it 2-0 here in the 30th minute. Ryan Tallis shot well, save with the goalkeeper, though. And Morata should have got his second, really. This shot was really tame, though, and straight to the goalkeeper. So, still 1-0 to Milan. 10 minutes for the break, though. Another chance for us on this free kick. Jetro Williams swings it into the centre. Wrong Nolly flicks it on, but can only hit the roof of the net. And he goes behind for a goal kick. So, still Sassuolo, nil Milan, one in this game. So, leading by a goal to nil. Playing quite well. Sassuolo were dominating possession, though. But in the second half... Off. How about this? Sassuolo give the ball away. Morata wins it. Gives it to Origi and possibly his final appearance off the bench. And he gets an assist for guess who? Marco Ryan Taller. He scored his first goal since hitting 90. And his first goal in quite a while as well. Marco hasn't found the back of the net in several games now. But he does score here. Makes it Sassuolo nil. Milan 2. And I am really pleased with that. So Origi coming off the bench. Getting an assist in probably his final appearance for the club. Before being sold to Wolfsburg. 50 million pounds. Ryan Taller with a goal. And that's his 10th of the season in the Serie A as well. So we've got 20 last season in the Serie A. He'll be gunning for the golden boot once again. He gets his first goal in a while here and then gets his second goal as well a few minutes later. So Sassuolo nil Milan free. A brace for Ryan Taller. I was so pleased to see him notch up once again and then he's got his second in a matter of minutes. Thought well, that was kind of funny. But uh, either way, Sassuolo nil Milan free. This was such a simple goal as well. I mean, seriously, like I play on Legendary and usually the AI is quite compact at the back and I struggle to just pass the ball inside centrally. But 
but that was just such an easy goal. But uh, either way, Ryan Tallow is 11th of the season, so goal number 11 in the Serie A for our number 11, and we do win the game by three goals to nil. So really pleased with that. Another great win as well. We still haven't conceded a goal in, I don't know how many games now. Is that, is that seven games now where we haven't conceded a goal? Absolutely crazy. We are so much better defensively. Another three goals scored there as well. I do believe that is 17 goals scored in seven games, which is just fantastic, isn't it? And for, for me, for someone who struggles to score goals in this year's FIFA, that is fantastic. And what's even more fantastic is following that. Two bits of great news here. Number one, Marco Verratti accepts his contract straight off the bat. £45 million, 180 grand a week on a five-year deal. So happy with that. And also, as well, you can see here, a player does get sold. This is the second bit, a bit of great news. Di Wakarigi goes to Wolfsburg for fifty million pounds, which is absolutely insane. So I'm I'm so happy with both of those deals right there because you know Verratti, you could say, oh, it's five million pounds over the valuation. You know, you didn't need him per se, but I really wanted him, and I'm so glad I haven't had to pay fifty million pounds plus, which is what I was expecting to pay. And as for Origi going, I know in recent games he's played a little bit better. Came off the bench to get an assist there in the uh, the game before that he started. Got two goals and an assist but he's still not filled me with too much confidence this, uh, confidence this season and for 50 million pounds we can definitely find someone better to sit on the bench so because of that I'm really happy with that deal and uh, really happy with the Verratti deal as well two great pieces of business there in my opinion also Bonaventura is going to go to Atletico Madrid for 11 million pounds they wouldn't go to 12 million pounds which is a valuation that's what they asked for but 11 million pounds isn't too bad and again I, I did plan to sell him we don't need to now we've got Verratti in and um, you know we, we've already got the midfield to come in, he can sit uh, in the, on the bench now, Bonaventura. But I did, I did plan to sell him, so we may as well let him go instead of putting him on the bench. And we'll try and sign a better backup midfielder. Otherwise, just put Verdi on the bench. He's 80 overall, playing quite well this season. I don't mind either way. But uh, still, following that, we did decide to go on the hunt for a new backup striker, Angel Correa, who I've heard a lot about, never used before though. Robert Lewandowski of Bayern Munich. Now, how about this? 89 overall, 32 years old. The reason I put in a bid for him is because his contract's up at the end of the year. We might be able to get him on a cheap a deal. We'll, uh, we'll have to wait and see though. I don't see it coming off, but you never know. And uh, also Hesse Rodriguez of Real Madrid, 82 overall. Now he is a left midfielder by trade, but as I said before, this guy can play right midfield, striker as well. Th this guy, I I've used this guy on FIFA before. I had him in my Club and Country series last year. He was so good and so versatile. So because of that, I wouldn't mind getting him in as a backup striker and we shall see. Uh, also Bonaventura did go to Athletic Madrid and Gabriel went to Augsburg as well. So 26 million pounds for the pair of them. It's all changed here at Milan. You know, it really is. It's all changed. So many players continue to leave the club, even in probably the final transfer window of the series. And it's just, it just means that no matter what happens come the end of this window, you're going to see a, not an entirely different Milan side, but a different one nonetheless, with a few new additions coming in for the remainder of the season and probably the series as well. So no matter what happens, it still should be really exciting to see who we bring in to replace those players as we continue to make Milan an even stronger side in the final transfer window. So they've stiffened their midfield, haven't they? In bringing in Marco Verratti, did well to get him. He did do well, and uh, he's one of those clever little midfielders that knocks the ball off first time. It's hard to get close to him. Good signing. And coming into our second and final game of the episode here, we take on Sampdoria in the Serie A away from home. Marco Verratti was discussed briefly by Martin Tyler and Alan Smith before the game as well. He would make his debut in this one for Milan. Worth noting too, seven of our first 11 now are Italian players, which I, I really like as well. I've said so many times before, you know, I've got a whole series dedicated to this sort of thing, club and country, which is on a break right now. You know, I, I like signing players come from the same nation as the club and Verratti now the seventh in the first 11 uh, coming from Italy is really, really Really good to see. So really pleased with that. And of course, Verratti as well, 45 million pounds. Now Milan's most expensive transfer ever. It was previously Ryan Taller at 40 million pounds. Now it's Verratti at 45 million pounds. But Ryan Taller now may be Milan's second most expensive signing ever. But I think he's still the most important signing ever. Ryan Taller scores here his third goal in two games just before the break and gets the first goal of this game as well, making it Sampdoria nil Milan one. We went on a break from a Sampdoria corner. Morata did so well to hold the ball up, play it through to the running uh, running Ryan Taller who runs through one on one and puts the ball past the goalkeeper for his 12th goal of the season. So Sampdoria nil Milan one. We led it a break. Pretty even first half, but not too much going on really. So in the second half, direct from kickoff, I wanted to try and get our second goal. As Jetro Williams found Morata here, he chested it round Sherry and got taken down as well. And the referee gave a penalty to just three minutes after the restart. So penalty to Milan, Morata's taken down. He's been in really good form of late. Getting the assist for that Ryan Tyler goal, now winning a penalty as well. Definite penalty to. He got clipped when going. 
going through and that is a definite spot kick in the referee's eyes and everyone else's. So penalty to Milan. Great chance to double the score. Ryan Tyler looking for his uh, second goal in the game. His uh, second brace in a row and fourth goal in two games and he gets it from the spot as well. Goal number 13 in the Serie A for Ryan Tyler right now. Playing so well this season just like last year. Looking so good once again and now four goals in two games for our skipper as well. So he hadn't scored in quite a few games so he needed to start scoring again and banging them in again. Four in the last two, I'll take that, no doubt about it. 13 goals in the Serie A this season, playing really well. Sampdoria nil, Milan 2. He almost got his first hat-trick of the season here from this free kick, but Sally at the post and it was still 2-0 as he still goes in search of his first free kick goal of the year. And then the 82nd minute, how about this as well? Backage gives it to Ryan Tallett inside his own half. He goes on a run, showing his confidence here. This would have been one of the goals of the series. Wonderful run by Ryan Tallett, but again, for the second time in the game, he hits the woodwork, he hits the crossbar this time, and it's still 2-0. So I was thinking to myself, it's just not going to happen, is it? You know, seriously, he's hit a post from a free kick, then the bar from that wonderful run. Still, it's 2-0 to Milan. And yeah, sure, we're going to win the game and everything, but I'd love Ryan Tallis to get his first hat-trick of the season. And he got a great chance to do it here in this game, but sadly, it was still 2-0. But uh, from Sam Doria's break here, they gave the ball away. We went on the counter once again, and Mitov Nilsson off the bench, find Ryan Taller. This was it, the third time lucky. Could he get it right this time? Yes, he did. He didn't hit the post or the bar. Instead, he hit the back of the net and ran to the cameraman as well to celebrate with his teammates. Sam Doria nil, Milan free. His first hat-trick of the season. I would have preferred him scoring either the free kick or the nice solo goal. It would have looked way better for the third goal, but either way, it's a good finish. That's the most important thing. Ryan Tyler does find the back of the net. Sampdoria nil, Ryan Tyler free, or Milan free if you will. Ryan Tyler scoring all three goals. Great to see, and he does get his first hat-trick of the season. So it would have been great had he scored one of those free kicks or the, uh, the solo goal. It would have been lovely to see that, but the most important thing is he walks off with the match ball and he knows he's helped his side to get three points once again as he's got his fifth goal in two game. So really pleased with that. We've got Verratti. Origi's been sold for £50 million. Ryan Tallis finding the back of the net again and we're still top of the table. Everything coming together really nicely on Milan. 20 goals in the last 8 games. Zero conceded in the last 8 games. We've entered the zone. We're playing so well now and no one can stop us. But that is going to be today's episode of Career Mode, guys. So thank you very much for watching the video. Really hope you have enjoyed it. If you're enjoying today's episode of Career Mode, then please do consider leaving likes. It's of course much appreciated. I really want my channel out. You don't have to leave a like if you don't want to. Totally up to you and I'll see you the next episode of career mode very soon.